dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail... Yes, proudly we hail, starring Frances Gifford in The Valentine Girl, United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Our star is Frances Gifford, who appears in a bright comedy, The Valentine Girl. She portrays a department store clerk who wins an all-expense trip to Bermuda learns about gin rummy and card sharks, and finds romance that commences with a broken heart. The curtain for act one in a moment. Here now is Wendell Niles. A strong America is a peaceful America. Your regular army and U.S. Air Force men are our strong right arm of peace, and they are ambitious, intelligent men who have chosen for themselves a career with a future. While keeping America at peace, they are following a career in which they can better themselves and advance through their own efforts. They are making better men of themselves and a safer world in which to live. And now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's act one of The Valentine Girl, starring Frances Gifford as Lucy Ballard. Now, there isn't anything particularly unusual about Lucy Ballard. Just another clerk in Valentine's department store, you might say. Lucy's 23, of average intelligence and unmarried. She lunches at Child's Restaurant every working day, takes in a movie on Saturday nights, and subscribes to passionate love stories. Like every shop girl, Lucy has romantic dreams. And the reason we're bringing her attention to you now, well, one of those dreams is about to be realized. Come in. Wanted to see me, Mr. Valentine? Your... Lucy Ballard. Oh, yes, Miss Ballard. Come in, come in, come in. Thank you. Now, let's see. Oh, yes, have a chair. Oh, thank you. Your department is... Uh... I'm in men's underwear. Yeah. Yes, of course. And you're doing a fine job in men's underwear. Keep it up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Valentine. As a matter of fact, that's the reason I called you in. The results of our campaign to select Valentine's most courteous sales lady has been tabulated... Customers have selected you, Lucy. Oh, gee. I mean, golly, you. Don't thank me, Lucy. Perseverance is its own reward. <laughs> How do you think I got where I am today? Perseverance? Precisely. Bull by the horns, best foot forward. That's been my motto. Do you know where I started? No, sir. In ladies' beachwear. But was I content to stay in ladies' beachwear? Were you? No, indeed, I was not. Perseverance spurred me onward into men's pajamas. Out of men's pajamas into children's play dogs. And finally... Yes? I was awarded the time-honored medal of competence. A con. You mean... I became a floor walker. Oh, gee. I mean, golly. Then I advanced to sales manager, manager, and at last a store of my own. A small haberdashery. And from a humble beginning as a haberdasher... Yes? I became president. Oh, gee. President and owner of Valentine's Incorporated, one of the largest department stores of its size in America. Oh, golly, Mr. Valentine. Ponder well that name of Valentine. An honored name, a name which has more than once struck terror into the hearts of, you should pardon the expression, Macy and Gimbo. Oh, not them. Yes, them. It's all right if I mention their names, Lucy. Oh. Uh, but enough of me. We're here to talk about you. We are? Indeed. Diligence and application to duty do not go unrewarded at Valentine's. As our most courteous sales lady, it is my pleasure to inform you that you are to be our Valentine girl. I am? You will receive a complete wardrobe from our Park Avenue section. You are to wear our most expensive jewels and furs aboard ship. And while in Bermuda... Bermuda? Mm hmm Bermuda. Oh. Lucy, you are going on a two-weeks cruise, all expenses paid. How does that sound? Oh, it sounds... it sounds... I thought it would. However, there's one thing to remember. Whenever anyone compliments you on your ensemble or jewelry, you're to say, 
I bought it at Valentine's, the finest department store in America. Now, let's try it. Uh, where did you get that dress you're wearing? Oh, this? Oh, well, it's an old one. I got it before I came to work here. It was marked down for $9.95 at Sayers. And so no, I... no, 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 Miss Ballard. Hmm? You bought it at Valentine's, the finest department store in America. Oh. Dear, dear, dear. Now, repeat after me. I bought it at Valentine's. I bought it at Valentine's. The finest department store in America. The finest department store in America. I bought, I it, bought it at, at Valentine's. Valentine's. The finest the department, finest department, department store, store in America. No, 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 you're not in tempo. Now repeat it once more. I, I bought, bought it at Valentine's. Valentine's the, the finest department, department store, store in America. America. Good, good, that's mm. excellent. Now remember that. Yes, sir. Dear, I hope you forgive me. But that hair. Perfectly charming. Where did you get it? Oh, it goes with the ensemble. Gee, the water's blue, isn't it? Ah, oh, yes, I suppose so. I've never been on a boat before. Have you? Too often, I'm afraid. Are you going to Bermuda? Yes, it seems that way. Oh, so am I. Well, we'll probably see quite a lot of one another. Permit me to introduce myself. I'm Dorothy Walkett. I'm very happy to know you. I'm Lucy Ballard. Oh, I'm so delighted to meet you, Miss Ballard. Uh, by the way, do you have any plans for lunch? No. Oh, please join us. I'm traveling with my husband and a business associate of his. Oh, <laughs> there they are now. Oh, but the shop aboard. Uh, the good-looking one is, uh, unfortunately, not my husband. He is good-looking, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> oh, come along. I'll introduce you. Here they come, Stephen, my boy. Looks like Dottie's got her hook. Colonel, sir, I got a good look at her diamond bracelet when she came aboard. It's the McCoy. That's very cheering, my boy. Very cheering indeed. She's probably one of those mainline debutantes with more money than sense. Let us trust that such is the case, Stephen, my boy. Colonel Stephen. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. I'd like to introduce Miss Ballard. And this is my husband, Colonel Walcott. Of the Lexicon Walcotts. Your servant, ma'am. How do you do? And Mr. Stephen Gordon. It's my pleasure. My pleasure, Miss Ballard. <laughs> Miss Ballard is dining with us. Oh, fine. Well, the steward just sounded second call. Shall we go in? All right. Your first voyage, Miss Ballard? Oh, yes. You're traveling alone, of course? Oh, yes. Well, then we'll take it as our duty to see that you don't get lonesome, man. Oh, thank you. Perhaps we can uh, play a bit of cards after lunch. A little uh, gin rummy? Oh, well, I I'm afraid I I'm not very good at cards. Excellent. What? Uh, that is, we'll do our utmost to teach you. Oh, thank you. It will be a pleasure, ma'am. Yes, indeed. A great pleasure. Jack of spades to you, ma'am. I think I can use that. Yes, I can. I've got... What do you call it? Gin, ma'am? <laughs> That's it. Gin. Well, so you have. Gives you a total of 52 points. <laughs> well, let's see that. There's another triple blitz. Oh, it appears, my dear, that I owe you $1,400. $1,400? But I thought we were playing for a penny a point. So we were. Penny a point, $10 a frame, and $100 a game. Here. Here you are, my dear. Perhaps I'll have better luck next time. Oh, I couldn't take your money. Nonsense, my dear. Of course you can. And may I add, I've never bowed to a more charming opponent. Oh, but I... Now, if you'll forgive me, we'd best tidy up for supper. You'll join us, of course. Say, 8 o'clock in the lounge. 8 o'clock. Until then. Good afternoon, Miss Wilson. Oh, good afternoon. Well, leaving so soon. Uh, see you at 8. Well, honey, how did you do? My dear children... Offhand, I should say that the fish appears to have been gassed. <laughs> she won $1,400. Oh, well, I think you should have let her win a little more money. I tried to, my dear, but she continually made the most outlandish mistakes. Frankly, I've never had a more difficult time getting rid of money. Well, let her win a few thousand after dinner. 
Then tomorrow night, we can start to apply the hooks. Mm, yes, and you better start turning on the charm. We don't want her to lose interest. She won't. I'll give her the full treatment in the moonlight after the game. You know, you might try the uh, if winner comes routine. She looks like the type. <laughs> Beautiful tonight, isn't it? Yes. Look at the waves. Turbulent, restless. The stars peering down. So calm, so serene. You know, I often think that waves are like people, threshing for freedom only to die away to a ripple. Oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind. Oh, that's pretty. Hey, Shelley. Do you read, Shelley? Uh, no, I don't have much chance to read. I'm usually pretty busy. Yes, I can imagine. Parties, dinner affairs, the hairdresser. Keeping abreast of society can be a full-time job. Well, I don't know about that. Where but... are you from, Lucy? May I call you Lucy? If you want. New York. Quite a town. Dorothy now lives in New York. She's nice, says the colonel. But I'm getting embarrassed winning all of his money. Do you know that tonight I won over $3,000? Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure the colonel's luck will change. No, here we don't want to talk about money. We don't? Lucy, I like you. You do? I like the way you smile. The way you dress, your gown. Oh, I bought it at Valentine's. The finest department store in America. And, and that funny little hat. I bought it at Valentine's. The finest department store in America. Uh, you're sweet. Refreshing. Tell me my eyes are like star sapphires. What? I read it in passionate love stories. I always wanted someone to say that to me. Well, your eyes are like star sapphires. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Lucy, uh, I'd like to kiss you. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. You're very pretty. Mm, so are you. Hmm? I, I mean, you look like Cary Grant. He's my favorite movie actor. Oh. Well, I suppose we'd better be getting in. Turning chilly. Oh, I'm not cold. It's getting rather late, too. Oh, I'm not sleepy. We'd better say good night. Uh, all right. Good night. Um. Yes? You uh, wouldn't like to take another walk around the deck. Well, no, not tonight. Thank you. Uh, well, good night. Good night. Um. Yes? If you're thirsty, maybe... We could have a Coke in the bar. Oh, no, thanks. Steve? Yes? You don't mind me calling you Steve, do you? No. Steve, you can kiss me goodnight if you like. Thank you, Lizzie. Oh, you're welcome. Well, good night. Good night, Lizzie. Good night. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, The Valentine Girl, starring Frances Gifford, to bring you an important message from your government. Men, it's not too soon to start thinking about aviation cadet pilot training. Those Air Force quotas are starting to fill up. If you want to be a pilot in Uncle Sam's Air Force, this is your big chance. Listen to the requirements. Two years of college, or the equivalent, single, 20 to 26 and one-half years old, and physically sound. If you fill these qualifications, get your application for aviation cadet pilot training right away. You'll study airplane motors and air navigation. You'll learn to fly the latest planes. And upon successful completion of your training, you'll be commissioned a lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. You may even qualify for a regular commission. And get this, men, your pay will range up to $336 a month. Get your application right away at your nearest Air Force base or recruiting station. rises on Act Two of The Valentine Girl, starring Frances Gifford as Lucy Ballard. An ocean voyage, a beautiful debutante, and a handsome escort are surefire ingredients for a shipboard romance. However, in this story of ours, there's a few drawbacks. Our debutante, in reality, is a shop girl for Valentine's department store. And the handsome hero 
is actually a very smooth card shark. After allowing Lucy to win a few thousand dollars, Steve's confederate, Colonel Walcott, has decided to go to work in earnest. A rummy game is in progress in the Colonel's stateroom. Eight of diamonds to me? Well, I'm afraid that's the name of the game, my dear. Gin. Why, I've got all picture cards. My, my, you do have a mess of points there. Seventy, eighty-two plus twenty-five is a hundred and seven. Well, that puts me out across the board. Uh, <clears throat> shall we play another? No, I'm out, Colonel. I have the total right here. Uh, let's see, that's 7,307. 7,000? Check the figures, you Much money. Well, there's no need to fret, my dear. I'll take my 4,500 back, and you can write me a check for the balance. But that's just it. I, I don't have a checking account. Your money's tied up in savings, eh? Well, that's very smart. I'll tell you what we can do, my dear. You leave your bracelet as security, and we can set it up when we get back to New York. Oh, but I can't do that. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to make some kind of an arrangement. But you don't understand. My bracelet... We'll be in the best of hands. Uh, come, come, we'll play another. Uh, perhaps your wit will be completely unnecessary. No, I don't want to play anymore. Oh, give it another try, my dear. Your luck can't stay bad forever. Well, all right. Just one more game. <laughs> What's the matter? Everything. Well, you can tell me. I never should have taken this old trip. I never should have met you people. I'll go to jail. What are you talking about? My jewelry. I lost all of it to the colonel. But it isn't mine. Not yours? No. Well. I bought it at Valentine's, the finest department store in America. What? No, no I, I mean it belongs to Mr. Valentine. He'll probably send me to jail for a long time. I'll be very old when I get out. So who's Mr. Valentine? He's the man I work for. I'm the Valentine girl. I don't feel very much like her anymore. Well, now, wait. Let me get this straight. Just what do you mean by the Valentine girl? The store gave me all of these clothes, and a free trip to Bermuda's is a kind of a bonus. Then you're not a debutante? No, I'm in men's underwear. A shop girl? Uh-huh. H. Sebastian, and I always said I could spot class a mile away. You thought I was a debutante? I'm afraid so. Thank you. You're welcome. And listen, Lucy, maybe I can help you. You can? Yeah, I said maybe. You trust me, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. When I said I wished I hadn't met you people, I didn't mean you. I still think you look like Cary Grant. Don't say anything to anybody about your losses. You promise me that? I promise. And trust me. Oh, I will. <laughs> That's the way it is, Colonel. Shades of old Jeff Davis. If that doesn't take the cornfold, a shop girl. I gave her a pretty good pitch. I think it'll keep her quiet. What you better do now is give me the jewels. I'll fly back to New York and sell them before she gets a chance to talk to Valentine. Then we can meet you in New York in a couple of days. Yes. Oh, yes. Here, take the baubles, my boy. And don't forget to hold out for a stiff price. You can trust me, Colonel. <laughs> Oh, hello, Captain. Have you seen Mr. Gordon anywhere? Oh, yes, he's going down the gangplank now. Oh, thank you. Steve! Oh, Steve, I was looking for you. Hello, Lucy. I, I thought maybe you'd like to... You brought all of your luggage ashore. Yes. Well, you didn't have to do that. The captain said the steamship company would deliver anything that Well, you... I prefer to handle my own luggage. You're mad. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Anyway, if you're not, you might as well be, because you sound that way. I just finished telling you I'm not mad. There, you see. I guess I said something. No, no, you didn't say anything. Lucy, can't we just forget it? There's only a week left now. A week of what? My vacation can come, but I'm still glad I met you. And I'm glad I met you. Are you really? Didn't I offer to help you recover your jewelry? Uh-huh. All right, then. Come to think of it, you don't seem very much concerned about the jewels. You told me to trust you. I do. Yes, well, yeah, Lucy, Lucy, listen to me. You're a nice girl. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Other people, unfortunately, are sometimes not so nice. I think you're nice. Thank you. You're welcome. 
That's the point, Lucy. Maybe I'm not, well, exactly what you think I am. And maybe the same goes for the Colonel and Dorothy. Oh, I think they're nice, too. Oh, Lucy, you're so darn naive. It's like taking candy from a baby. What is? Never mind. Now, look, I've got to go to the air... the hotel. And Lucy. Yes? I want you to remember one thing. I've never had a conscience. I've never been sorry about anything in my life. I'm truly sorry about this. But it's business. I don't understand. You will soon enough. Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Come in. Well, Lucy... So our Valentine girl is back. Yes, Mr. Valentine. And I suppose you had a wonderful time. No, Mr. Valentine. What? Something terrible has happened, Mr. Valentine. Terrible? It's about the jewelry you gave me to wear. Oh, uh, just, just one moment. Yes? No, I can't see anyone now. Now, what were you saying? It's about the jewelry. Uh, what about the jewelry? I haven't got it. You haven't got... Yes? What is it? I told you I can't see it. I, I, I don't care if it's about the, about the what? Well, don't keep him out there. Send him in. You see, Mr. Valentine, I, Steve. Hello, Lucy. The purser must have gotten our baggage mixed. I came across these. The jewels. That's the jewels. Oh, Valentine's is deeply grateful to you, Mr. Gordon. Uh, Mr. Gordon. But how did you know these belonged to my department store? Oh, a bit of deduction, a little perseverance. Perseverance? Uh, did you say perseverance? Mm hmm Mr. Gordon, we have to have a chat. We should have a long chat. Uh, Lucy, I believe you can return to your counter? Yes, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> Two nineteen, three, four, and five dollars. Here's your receipt, and thank you, madam. You're welcome. Miss Ballard. Oh, Steve. Miss Ballard, hadn't you better straighten up your display? Oh, Steve, I don't know how to thank you the for... The display, please, Miss Ballard? Steve, you... you... Yes, Miss Ballard. You've got a carnation. A time-honored medal of competence, to quote Mr. Valentine. You're a floor walker. Yes, but will I always be a floor walker? Will you? Indeed not. Perseverance will spur me onward. How did Mr. Valentine get where he is today? Perseverance. And where did he start? In Ladies' Beachwear. Precisely. But was he content to stay in Ladies' Beachwear? He was not. He became president. Who knows? Maybe I'll be president. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't be taking any more trips with the Colonel and Dorothy. No, and I don't believe they'll be traveling much either. Some ship detectives informed them that their patronage would no longer be welcomed. Where are they? Well, the Colonel is right over there, is he? It's our pleasure, madame. If ever you are dissatisfied with the Valentine purchase, it is your privilege, nay, your duty, to return same. We like to believe that our complaint department is rather a department of satisfaction. It is our... Dorothy, what about her? Uh, over by the elevator. Step oh? down, please. Watch your step. Going up, up. Watch the doors, please. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have one big happy family. Well, not yet. Hmm? We'll have to get married first. Oh. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I hope we'll have boys. Why? So they'll all look like Cary Grant. Huh. Well, if we have girls, it won't be so bad. You know, Lucy, I've never told you before, but you look an awful lot like that movie actress. What's her name? Frances Gifford. Well, that's what my mother always said. <laughs> in the final act of The Valentine Girl. Our star, Frances Gifford, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Education is the keynote in the regular army today. Your soldiers are learning through valuable vocational training. They're learning through travel and meeting the people of foreign countries. And they are studying various subjects through such facilities as the United States Armed Forces Institute. The Armed Forces Institute, or USAFI, 
makes available study to the army man in a wide range of subjects, such things as accounting, journalism, languages, up through college level. Yes, education is the keynote in the regular army today. And the young man who wants to combine a career with a future education will find the army is just what he's looking for. So, young man, why don't you find out just how an army career will fit you? Get all of the facts about the many educational opportunities. Stop in at your local recruiting station this week. Now, once again, our star, Francis Gifford, and our producer. Ladies and gentlemen, meet our star, Francis Gifford. Francis, come out and take a bow. Oh, gee, I mean, golly. You still sound like Lucy. <laughs> you know, I enjoy doing Lucy CP. Lucy was not long on brains. You could hardly call her erudite like yourself, but a nice and, I might add, beautiful girl. And I'll bet she likes Crosby, Como, Tony Martin, and Gordon McRae. I do. Why, I thought you collected only classical records, Francis. Oh, no, I like almost everything. Now that I have a new radio phono console and get much better reception, I'm collecting a lot of different things in music. Such as? We oh, Torby, Castellanos, Gould and Rose, Brahms, Shostakovich, Stravinsky, Spike Jones. <laughs> Spike will appreciate being listed among the masters. As they write it. He sets them back. <laughs> or spinning in their graves. <laughs> Seriously, Francis, I know of no better hobby, especially for one so talented musically as you. Well, I like so much that I hear, especially now that I wish I had the time and space to really collect the things that I want in records. Here are a couple of collector's items that you can't buy that I dug up of Chopin's Polonaise. I hope you can use them. Oh, thanks, C.P. I'll play it for you someday. Now maybe I can do you a favor. Maybe I could get you a real price on a console like mine. Fine. Where? At Valentine's, the finest department store in America. <laughs> <laughs> I might have known. Well, anyway, you can tune us in next week. Oh, I will, C.P. I'll be on hand. Who's playing? Next week, Francis, and ladies and gentlemen... Marie McDonald stars in a drama titled The Most Enchanted. She portrays a top-flight Broadway actress who is given one year to live. It is the story of courage and romance, of self-sacrifice and fleeting numbered days. I'll be listening, that's the promise. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Francis. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we present Marie McDonald in The Most Enchanted. Until next week... This is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Francis Gifford appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Remember, proudly we hail next time to then Marie McDonald. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.